Welcome to the Fife Life, Australian Canary Hobby, journal number four. Uh, well, four, I'm doing more, wow. So uh, that's pretty cool, it's pretty exciting. Had lovely messages from everyone again this week. Uh, some positive feedback about uh, the, the last episode, which was talking about water. And today I'm gonna to talk about seed. Uh, you know, I keep things pretty basic. Um, I consider this the seed we feed our birds, meat and three veg in my bird room. Uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the seed mix that I use and some of the things that I've found uh, through trial and error. Before I jump into the topic of uh, today's journal, I want to give a couple of shout outs. I want to say a, a shout out to Philip's Bird Room. Uh, thank you for your lovely message, mate. And uh, Philip has a YouTube channel, so you can head on over there and check that out. And he's got some beautiful red factor canaries. And also the border corner. I want to say thank you, mate, for your lovely message as well and for saying g'day. Uh, again, he's got a YouTube channel and you can check that out and then check out his borders, of which I used to have borders. Um, ours are a little bit different to the UK standards, but uh, yeah, you've got some lovely birds in your shed and, and thank you so much, guys, for reaching out. The other thing is I want to let everyone know, and I've already put a thing on our Facebook page, uh, David from David's Bird Room. He will be here in Australia. He's going to be in the Coffs Harbour area and he'll be here from the end of March for a month. Now, I don't know what's happening around the Coffs Harbour region, but if there's anything happening in the way of bird shows or any exhibitions or bird sales, uh, you can message him, and he has a YouTube channel as well, David's Bird Room, or you can message me and, and I can help hook you up and, and be a, a connector uh, as such. But uh, he's really keen to do some filming while he's out here, which I think would be great to uh, give some more exposure and further showcase the hobby here in Australia. So. David from David's Bird Room will be in the Coffs Harbour area end of March for a month. All right, guys, so uh, hopefully we can accommodate him and uh, share the love. All right, so today's topic, uh, last, last journal was we're talking about water, and today I'm going to talk about seed. Uh, in, in my bird room, I keep things pretty basic, as you've probably figured out already, um, but when it comes to seed, uh, I've learned a couple of things sort of via trial and error. And, and I consider my seed mix, it's like meat and three veg. It's a staple in my bird room. Um, you know, I don't, I don't alter it. So that's just what I do. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the seed products that I use and, uh, you know, things that I've found a bit hit and miss uh, in the hobby that will hopefully help, you know, more your beginner guys and people starting up, but just how you can make sure that you're giving your birds the, the best seed possible. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Alrighty, bird seed. Uh, Obviously, it's something that the birds uh, are required to, uh, you know, keep them alive. But um, when it comes to bird seed, uh, you know, I've got my way of doing things. And, uh, and as I said, the, the intro of this video that I've, I've done things via trial and error. And, uh, you know, I found this, what I'm doing now really seems to work for the birds. And, and over the years, uh, when I've posted photos of my birds and uh, I've shared things on social media, uh, I've always had, you know, comments and people always said, you know, nice birds, the birds look good, they're in good condition, um, nice healthy birds, and uh, and they are. And in the last journal I spoke about water, and now we're going to talk about seed, it really is the basics, but the basics done brilliantly uh, is, is kind of a theory that I work on, and with my seed mix, it's, it's my meat and three veg, it's a staple of the bird's diet, and I don't change it. I, I know guys that use tonic seeds, seasonally they, they may adjust their seed mixes and so forth. I don't. Uh, I kind of look at the conditioning of birds and having birds in good condition is if you just kind of do something that works all year round and you can give your birds really good quality seed, then you don't have to play catch up going into the breeding season. Um, you don't have to change things a whole lot. So what I do with my seed mix um, and, and I'm going to show you a, a video of the seed mix so that you guys can have a look at how, it, how it's mixed up and what the ratios and the quantities are, is I've got canary seed here. Now, don't I, I couldn't quote you all of the seeds that go into a, a canary mix. You can just Google it, but um, my memory's not that good. But I just use a basic canary mix, okay? That's the base. Then, what I add to that is I actually add uh, a, a finch mix which has a little bit more millet and, and the small seed varieties. Now the ratio that I mix is I go three parts canary mix and I just top it up and just mix in a little bit of the, the smaller seed varieties and the millet mix. Um, it just I, I, I find that canaries can be a bit picky and a little bit fussy and they tend to target the larger seeds 
And the great thing about these hoppers is when I pull the drawers out of them, I can see very clearly what the birds are targeting, what seeds they have, they have a preference for. And they're all a little bit different in the shed. You know, they, they, they do have different preferences as individuals, but that's one really good thing about these seed hoppers is I can actually see what the birds are, uh, are eating as far as the seed mix. So i found when they target the bigger seeds that, you know, I might just bump the, the millet mix and the, and, the, and the small seed mix ratio just up a little bit, maybe, a, you know, two thirds canary to a third of, of the smaller seed mix. Um, and that seems to balance them out a little bit because, you know, if you let them choose, they'll, they'll choose the target and preference whatever they want. So that's the, the, the two starts of the mix, the base, and then just a little bit of a top up of the small seed and millet mix. And then the superpower, niger seed. Now, niger seed, uh, it's very rich. It's, it's, a, it's a, a very strong source of protein for the birds. Uh, I give it to them all year round, just because, like I said, the birds look good, never really needed to change anything. And the ratio of niger seed I put into the mix is one tenth. Okay, so one tenth ratio to the other mixes of niger seed. I found it a little bit hard to get initially, and locally I can't buy this. So I just um, I just freight it up from a produce place in New South Wales. Look, the, the freight cost is a little bit more, but I get it five kilos at a time. And uh, yeah, it it's really is something that once I started doing it, I noticed the birds really loved it and, and they were looking really good. Now, talking about seeds and, and uh, the seeds that I purchase, I go to a local uh, fresh fruit and produce place and, and they have a really good range of, uh, of poultry needs and, and bird needs as well. They do occasionally sell uh, the odd chook and there's, there's chickens there, there's ducks for sale there, I've seen budgies and, and other birds for sale there, but they're not a pet shop. Now, the seeds that I purchase from there I don't buy in huge quantities. And this is something that I found a bit hit and miss for me, is when I was buying large 20 kilo bags of seed, there was a lot of byproduct in it. So there was husk and uh, you know little bits of sort of clippings and grass and wheat clippings and things like that. Um, you know, the odd sunflower seed or whatever. So I went away from that. I don't need to keep large quantities of seed because I can buy it regularly and that means I'm, you know, it's fresh. But uh, the other thing is, I don't keep a huge quantity of birds. If you've got a lot of birds and you're really serious into the hobby, you're probably not gonna be doing it this way. But the thing that I really love about this, and I'll hold them up to the camera, is it's so clean. And what they do at the produce place is they have a seed cleaner and they put the seed through the seed cleaner and that gets rid of all of the dust. Now that was one thing that I was finding with buying bulk seed uh, in the, you know, like the, the large bag, 20 kilo bags that you can't see into as well. So they don't have a window showing what the seed mix is and you open it up and there's a lot of dust in it. Now dust is not good for birds, right? And it's not good for us, but it can cause respiratory issues with your birds. So just a heads up on that, um, having your seed cleaned is a really good thing and I'm very grateful for the guys that do that because I no longer have issues with dust building up um, and you can see if I take that drawer out there's no there's no dust so that's awesome that's really good for the birds health all right so there's a little tip there all right now I'm just going to go around the room and just do a little bit of a tidy up and uh, and just go through the hoppers and give them a little bit of a top up and a little bit of a clean out uh, while I do that, what I thought I would talk about with uh, with diet and seed, and, and you know how I, I don't really change it up uh, during the year. What I have found, and I did it one year, and, and it proved to have pretty good results. And then I I didn't do it. Is I actually put a little bit of hemp seed in my seed mix, and did that uh, about a about six weeks before the breeding season. And it seemed to have a little bit of an effect. I don't know if we just had a good year that year or not, but I think I might try that again this year. I might try that again and just mix in a little bit of hemp seed and and just see 
see if there's a pattern with that. If there's anyone out there that knows a little bit about hemp seed, and uh, I've done a little bit of research, so I have basic understanding of it, but I'd be very curious to see if anyone has a bit more knowledge. Feel free to share that in the comments section or, or what have you. And uh, the thing to note as well, guys, is uh, the Facebook page that we have. We have a Five Life Facebook page, so you guys can jump on that. You can uh, post comments, you can send me messages, and uh, have a look at what's happening over there. I've been trying to stay a little bit active with that, just putting a couple little things up each week, because um, I think that's good for the hobby. It's good to have stuff out there and have people seeing it, so feel free to share. Please like and follow, because uh, liking and following and subscribing to things, that gives us uh, that gives us good exposure for the hobby. All right, so we've done a little bit of a clean out of the, the hoppers and we'll do a little bit of a top up. And uh, then we'll have a little bit of a top up of our waters and so forth. Now while I do that, and because you can't really sort of talk for hours about bird seed, it's not really the most thrilling topic, is it? But um, it might be good to have a little bit of a chat about bird clubs, about canary clubs. Because uh, you know, that's my observations, and certainly not wanting to, uh, to shit on anyone. But uh, you know, bird clubs in Australia are sort of lacking in the social media area. They seem to have a lot of content out there, and I just wanted you know, to start a club, you need a, you need a president, you uh, need a secretary, a treasurer, you need people in those roles. I'd be curious to know if uh, in our bird clubs, if clubs have allocated a, a role for social media. Because one of my thoughts, and I think this is something that just bounced around in my head the last week, uh, I think having a social media person doing all of that for our bird clubs, I actually think that could be a great role to bring young people into the hobby. You know, we think about building the hobby and some people will say, oh, you know, we need to visit schools, take some birds down to schools. I kind of feel like that, that mindset it's about a 1980s mindset, right? Those, those days are gone there. Those days are over. Where you can take birds into schools, you'll probably end up with some Karen getting all upset that there's a bird in a cage or some little Johnny in the classroom's got a bird allergy or something. I don't know. I just sort of feel like that, that, that's probably not the best way to get kids into the hobby. Um, but I definitely think that maybe having a, a social media person in your club, and that could be if you've got a a son or a daughter or a niece or a nephew or a grandchild, um, whatever. I just think, you know, what a perfect way that they all want to be YouTubers and influencers and all these things. That's what the young ones want to be these days. So if you've got a bird club and your social media is lacking or non-existent, it's not really happening, maybe that's something that we could look into um, and, and try and get young ones into the hobby through technology. So I think, you know, Facebook, whether you like it or not, and it can be a generational thing, I think some people just don't like Facebook, and that's fair enough, but uh, whether we like it or not, it's a necessary evil. And you might not like having a personal profile, and that's cool, um, but I think every club should have a strong presence, and, you know, I think it's one of the areas in our hobby that's lacking a little bit. So uh, let's try and inject some youth into the, into the social media aspect of the hobby, and it could just be with them videoing and, and cutting and editing stuff and that. I give my phone to my nine-year-old daughter and she runs rings around me, guys. So, uh, you know, that's, that's where the world's heading. That's where we're at these days is uh, maybe, maybe we can do that a little bit better with our clubs. And, uh, yeah, it's just food for thought, I guess. So time to do some drinkers now and then a little bit of spot cleaning and then I'm out of here. My day is done. All right, so I'll whiz around and do, do the drinkers now. Uh, one of the things that I did during the week is I had a lovely catch-up with a gentleman by the name of Gary Cook. Thanks again, mate. It was uh, lovely to meet you. Gary was up visiting some family here in Townsville. And uh, funny enough, he, he realised very quickly why uh, I'm constantly doing this. Because the weather that he experienced while he was here was one of the hottest days we've had all year. So uh, poor old Gary was melting. <laughs> we went out to lunch. Um, but uh, 
you know, he'd worry. He thought maybe there was a medical condition that I had or something because my shirt was wet in one of the episodes. And I was like, no, mate, it's just very hot at this time of year. But at that lunch, while I was having a, a good chat to Gary, we did talk about, um, you know, how the, how the hobbies, or where the hobbies at, right? Where, where we sort of felt the hobby was at. And, and as I said, social media is an area I think we can do a little bit better, guys. Uh, and the other thing was, was sort of target, target markets, like, what, what are the, the people that we can sort of maybe try and bring into the hobby? And I said to him, you know, being in Townsville here, we're, we're a defence town. So we've got the ADF, the Australian Defence Force here. And uh, being a defence town, uh, I do a, a fair bit of work with the dog training. And I work with people training some assistance dogs. And they do wonders for people with PTSD. Um, but having a dog's not for everyone. And I did think for... Maybe some people in that that demographic, ex-defence, maybe some people that are struggling a little bit with their mental health. Canaries are an awesome hobby to just slow you down, to get in your shed and just let the world's worries be on the other side of the door. Uh, it's a great hobby because you need to be, uh, you know, a person of routine, structure, and I think those things are something that those, those guys really benefit from. So what I'm going to try and do, so I'm going to try and get out and about this year and I might go and attend one of their open days, have a little bit of a chat to someone and say, hey, I'm just wondering whether I think we might be able to do something and, and give it a little bit of a, a promote of the hobby in that space. You never know. So again, just, just food for thought, just me just sharing the thoughts having a, a little bit of a think and ponder but I think that's been a little bit overlooked that uh, that side of things so there you go there's another another idea it's a great Daryl Kerrigan once said you're an ideas man that I am all right last couple of drinkers and to finish off talking about bird clubs the other thing that I I'm not sure if people realise is you don't have to live in the area of that club to be a member. Now it helps if you want to show your birds or if you want to network face to face but the beautiful thing about technology and the internet and all of that is I'm a member of about, I'm going to say somewhere but I don't even know how many clubs I'm a member of but it's more than 10 and uh, I get regular information, I get emails uh, the, the Fife Club, the Australian Fife Club in New South Wales. Um, I'm a member of there and I went through the other day and, and revisited and had a look at the gazettes and all the information and Andrew's done a wonderful job with their, with their monthly newsletter and, and the information provided there. You have access to all of that if you're a member of a bird club. So don't think you have to live where the club is to be a member. Because I don't, I don't even have a club here in Townsville. So that's just some food for thought. That uh, get out there and join clubs and support them. And the membership fees are next to nothing. You know, in a lot of cases, ten bucks, fifteen bucks. It's not a lot, but it helps support the clubs. Um, and it, it just gives us an opportunity to uh, to network and, and be a part of uh, what they're up to and what they're doing, and, and show a little bit of uh, bit of support. So again, there's another bit of food for thought. Another little idea for everyone and how you can support clubs. And uh, I'm just about done. A nice quick one, in and out. Let's have a little look at some perches. Give them a little bit of a tidy. I gave the bird room a really good clean yesterday and I was all set. I was all ready to, uh, to film an episode. And then I realized that we had a planned power outage. The lights went off. So I'll put that little blooper up and you can all have a little giggle at the end of that because uh, I got caught in my pants now. Uh, I was all ready to go and started filming and you now about 10 seconds into it, boom, the lights went off and uh, yeah, I was standing there looking like a bit of an idiot. I didn't know what had happened. I now know what happened, but yeah. So a little bit of a blooper. All right. Pretty good. Keep everything nice and clean. You all know where I'm at with dirty perches. I don't need to keep saying it, but I will keep saying it. I 
can't stand a dirty perch. And if you're gonna post photos on social media, uh, remember guys that there's animal rights and animal activist people out there and they're just looking for stuff to nitpick and they're looking for reasons that the cancel culture they're all looking for reasons to, to shut things down that they disagree with so if you don't give them any you don't give them any reasons or any any bait then they can't get to us all right done so that's it guys uh it was only a quick one I can't, I said, can't really talk for an hour about seed seed mix Canary mix as a base, good quality canary mix as a base. Uh, I add a little bit more of the small seed variety and a little bit of the, the millet in there and niger seed. Niger seed is really good for your birds. So hope you enjoyed that guys and uh, look out for journal number five. Uh, I've got a few ideas bouncing around in my head, as I always do. What's going on up, it's a busy space, it's like a blow fly in a jar up there. Uh, but I'll be talking uh, about a few other little topics next time I'm in the bird room and, and I've got you guys to keep me company. So have a lovely week and remember guys, a happy fife, happy life. Cheers. G'day everyone, Mike here from the Fife Life, Australian Canary Hobby, journal number four, our fourth episode. Oh, shit. <laughs>